Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Carrie, and welcome to the podcast, Carry On With Life and Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, if you're brand new to the show, welcome. I hope you enjoy uh, the show. You should check out the different episodes that I have available. Uh, if you don't know, I'm available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and now available on iHeartRadio. And for those who've been listening since the show has started, thank you for your ongoing support. Totally appreciated. You are loved. Uh, So it's been a while since I actually recorded a podcast episode and it feels really great to be behind the microphone again and just speak my mind and just talk and talk out to the masses here. And one of the things that I would like to bring to the show is awareness on different issues, different topics. It seems like the podcast show has been my kind of like my personal vlog. I mean, my name is on the show. It's it's on the title. So it, it is my show in a way, but I would like to expand more on different topics and different issues and really put my two cents into it and really expand. And um, as the show grows more and as I build an audience with that I hope to bring more content to the podcast instead of topics that are pertaining in the moment of my life but I mean just to expand on different things and give my uh, view on what's going on in the world today because we see on social media nowadays with Facebook Instagram all these different social media platforms. You got different websites like Huffington Post, CNN, you got Fox News, you got The Blaze, uh, you know, and there's different podcast shows as well, like Joe Rogan, you got Glenn Beck. I mean, you, you got different opinions and different views on that. And um, why not put my voice out there and and let the no- world know, you know, hey, I have a voice too. So... On today's episode, I'm going to talk about my official diagnosis and what's going on with my brain. And in case you guys don't know, or if you're new to the show, uh, I talked about in my previous episode how I was going in for an EEJ test and how I was kind of not sure about the outcome of what's going to happen with the test. But I will go ahead and dive into what happened at the EEG test and what happened after and why the hell did it take me so long to record a freaking podcast episode. So let's talk about the EEG. I went into the EEG test. It's at a sleep center at the hospital and they had me lay on a bed. So there was a gal named Charlie, who was the technician for the EEG test. She had me lay down and she glued these little ions on my head to measure the brain activity. And what's really important about this test is they check the brain activity to see if there's any um, signs of epilepsy. So when your brain is transmitting information, sending messages from the body to the brain, uh, there can be a situation where your brain misfires, like basically information doesn't get received to the brain and you can have a seizure and it's it could be epileptic or non-epileptic seizures. To rule out epilepsy, they take this EEJ, can't, EEG, God, try to say that five times fast. They take the EEG and they read the report to see whether or not it's epilepsy. If it was epilepsy, of course, there's medication. Your driver's license could possibly be taken away. Um, There's a lot of, you know, it's kind of sucky 
any medical diagnosis, honest to God, is really sucky. So I was a little worried about this. I was, I, one part of me said, I want to make sure what these things that I was having, these episodes, is it related to epilepsy? I need to know this. But at the same time, I, I just, I was scared because I didn't know. And, you know, it's something that could affect me for the rest of my life. But I had to go in. I had to know. I had to um, take care of myself. So as um, we started the EEG, um, they have strobes of light where they have you close your eyes and they strobe these lights in your face. And you open your eyes, close your eyes again, strobe the lights. And each time they strobe these lights, it gets faster and faster. And as I was laying there, I kind of felt a twitch in my neck because it was so powerful. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, whoa, this, this shit is powerful. Like it's like hitting, like the light is just like slapping me and I'm just like, ugh. it was a lot. And so after the strobe light test, uh, the technician had me do a breathing exercise where I did deep breathing for three minutes. And after the three minutes, I kid you not, right after that, I started having a seizure. Um, I was flapping around like a fish out of water. I was having body tremors. My arm was flapping around my left arm. Um, My legs were flapping around the EEG technician saw it. And of course her job is to observe and monitor and report what's going on. And as, uh, she was doing that, she kind of just let me do my thing, write it out. And after my episode ended, that was pretty much it. And she let me go home. So I actually drove to the EEG test myself, not knowing the outcome Of what was going to happen with the EEG. I mean, dumb me. I should have had my husband or somebody drive with me. uh, Because shortly after, I felt kind of weird about what happened. So I kind of hung out at the hospital. And I went to the cafeteria, grabbed something to eat. You know, just kind of hang out. And I felt kind of twitchy, in a sense. Like my head wanted to move on its own. And then sure enough, when I finished eating, I went to my truck and I sat there and then boom I started having seizure episodes again and what's interesting is that my seizure episodes would last like three minutes it would stop fire up again for another two three minutes stop fire up again for another two three minutes and this lasted at least a two hour period and of course sitting in my truck having these episodes I called my husband And I said, hey, I'm not comfortable uh, driving. You need to come pick me up. And what's interesting about my seizures, when I have them, I'm very coherent about what's going on. I might not respond right away, but I could hear people and I could do my best to respond to somebody while I'm in the midst of these seizures, which is uh, a really good thing for me uh, that really helps out a lot. So I went home that day and then I got the EEG results and I mentioned in the EEG results that what I was having during the time was called a condition called PNES. Now I know what you're thinking. That sounds like penis. (laughs) No, it's not called penis. It's the acronym for psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. And I'll kind of dive in a little bit more about that. So when I read about PNES, in the non-epileptic seizures, of course, I do the one thing that doctors tell you not to do. I went on Google and I Googled it. I looked around and looked at information and I even found like one or two Facebook groups for people who have psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, and I actually joined the groups. So I finally saw the neurologist about that, and before I actually saw the neurologist, 
I had another episode and the episode was so bad that I actually went to the hospital because I thought this, it was a lot worse than it was before. I mean, it, I mean, full on tremors. Like I talk about fish out of water. I mean, I was like three fishes out of water and I'm just all over the place with my tremors. Literally. It was crazy and I had no control of this I was in the ER waiting for a bed and I was on a gurney and when I was laying on the gurney I couldn't really remember where I was or what was happening and I'm flopping around like a fish and this nurse named Michelle at St. Vincent's had the nerve to come up to me and say you know what you need to calm down with these you got to control yourself because you're going to fall off the gurney and I'm like, and I don't say this lightly, but I was like, bitch, are you kidding me right now? I can't control what is happening to me. I'm having a seizure and I can't control my body when it does this. And you're telling me, you're telling me to control myself when I'm having an episode I'm sorry, you need to back down, Miss ER Nurse. That was like really uncalled for. I'm I it still pisses me off to this day. It's just unfreaking believable. Like who who are you and why would you do that? You're a jerk. I mean I look, I have respect for nurses, for the job that they do. My mother worked in a hospital for twenty years. I have family members who are nurses and I have the full utmost respect for them and for their profession. But when somebody is in that state of mind where they can't control something and you go over and you tell them to control themselves when they're having a seizure, I'm sorry, that that's where the line crosses right there. That that still is instilled in my brain. What little memory I have of what happened, I, I remembered that. I don't know why. I was in and out of consciousness that day. I didn't remember much. I kept asking the paramedic, I don't know how many times where I was and what was going on. But for some reason, which I wish I didn't remember, but I did, was this nurse telling me to calm it down with my seizures that it just I was pissed I and and I'm still pissed to this day that that happened and and I'm sure she was having a bad day or you know the ER was just really busy that day don't know what it was but come on seriously but anyway moving on so it was in the ER again of course the ER doctor says don't know what to do for you. All we can do is save lives. We diagnose and try to save your life. There's nothing we can do here. Okay, that's that's understandable. And I just got discharged and went home. <laughs> Man, I can't imagine what my freaking hospital bill is right now. It's ridiculous. I mean, my hospital bill has to be like at least five grand right now. And I have to make monthly payments to the hospital to pay this off that's just that's frustrating so I go and make an appointment with the neurologist and my husband is with me my husband Kevin it's 8 30 in the morning we go to the neurologist's office and I'm sitting there and I'm just like I don't know what's going to happen um because at this point I don't have an official diagnosis I'm just going based on what the epilepsy specialist has written, you know, for the psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Um, I wasn't too sure if that was the official diagnosis, but I wanted to hear it from the neurologist herself. So my neurologist walks in. Dude, my neurologist looks badass. Like, she's kind of like, has this punk rock um, to her. She had these like Doc Martin, high heel Doc Martins with this yellow like cashmere sweater And a black shirt and black jeans walking in. She's pretty badass. And she's really smart, too. She's super 
um, informative, very, very informative woman. And I'm glad that, um, she's my neurologist. So she looks over the EEG report and she says, okay, your EEG is normal. You have no epilepsy. I'm like, sweet. Awesome. She says, however, but you have a condition, what's called psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. You have non-epileptic seizures. And what happens with non-epileptic seizures is that your brain has learned how to um, get rid of stress by having a seizure now. The way she explained it to me was this. Uh, People with psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, uh, people who had a traumatic event in their life, uh, PTSD or you know, something traumatic in their life, um, along with anxiety, depression, they have these non-epileptic seizures. The seizures can be triggered by many different things. It can be anxiety. It could be depression. Uh, it could be lack of sleep, stress, or it could be triggered by something by the subconscious. It could be something from the traumatic event or whatever it may be, your subconscious could trigger a seizure in a sense. And in order to kind of prevent these seizures from happening, one, there's no medication for non-epileptic seizures. Unlike people who have epilepsy, there's no, there's no medication for this. The best thing to do to prevent these seizures from happening is, you know, just Try not to get yourself overloaded, get plenty of sleep, you know, have a good diet, you know, this, that, the other, and that's pretty much it. In other words, the doctor is like, there's not really much you can do. Just try to keep your stress level down, um, just work with your therapist on your anxiety and depression issues. The good thing is, I can keep my license. Depending on what kind of epilepsy or what kind of seizures that you have, you could get your license taken away. But because I haven't had an episode behind the wheel, I didn't get my license taken away. But if there is an event, which I knock on wood, hope doesn't happen, then my license would be taken away. But the neurologist assured me, she said, the likelihood of you getting your license taken away is very slim. Because what's really interesting about epileptic seizures versus non-epileptic seizures is that epilepsy is a little bit different. It's the brain activity. So uh, epilepsy could, you can have an epileptic seizure happen, you know, where non-epileptic seizures, you can If your brain is busy, though, so driving, your brain is consistently scanning on the road, looking at cars and looking at the lanes, looking at the traffic light, looking for pedestrians. Your brain is busy. So if your brain is busy, so if I'm like, basically, if I'm working or doing something or driving, the likelihood of me having a seizure is very slim. Very, very slim. And the fact that I'm coherent during these times where I have a seizure helps out a lot too. So if I, for some reason, was driving down the road and, God forbid, I start feeling that I'm going to have a seizure coming on, I have the ability to pull myself over to the road and stop driving and call somebody and let them know, hey, I'm having a seizure. So that's a really um, good thing about this. You know, you you look at the bad of things, but you have to take the good out of it. And that's what I have learned with this diagnosis. Now, as talking to the neurologist more about this, um, she said, this is not going to be a rare thing. This is actually going to be a part of you for the rest of your life. She explained it to me like this. Because I asked her, I said, I'm almost 33 years old. I'm healthy. I've had no problems in my life medically. I've always had really good, you know, blood pressure and and this and that, the other. Maybe a couple of surgeries here and there, but why now? Why in my early 30s am I having seizures? She explained to me like this. 
It's like, you know, women going through puberty. Your body, the genes, different genes are activated in your body. Like, um, puberty, you grow a pair of boobs. Your boobs are growing. Because that's a gene that's been activated in the body to make those uh, girls pop out there. You know what I mean? So because this gene has activated and my brain has learned how to de-stress or not be overwhelmed, it has this gene is activated for me to have seizures. That's really what it boils down to and it's something I'm going to have for the rest of my life. And the brain, again, has learned, if I'm overwhelmed and if I'm stressed and something triggers and I'm freaking out, man, I need to put Carrie in a seizure mode and it just... And I have the seizures. (laughs) The seizures happen. And after the seizure has resonated, then my brain is back to normal. It's functioning at a normal rate again. So when my brain gets overwhelmed and it doesn't know what to do, now it knows what to do. It says, ah, seizure time. Ah." (laughs) Oh, just sitting here and actually doing that is really funny. I, I don't have a mirror in front of me, but just knowing that I'm acting this out of what my brain could do... (laughs) If my brain could talk, that's probably what it would say. And that's what cracks me up. Uh, so that's my little demonstration. How my brain gets overwhelmed. I had this diagnosis. Walking out of the neurologist's office, I felt like shit. It was total opposite of what the result was going to be. Because I went into that neurologist office and I said, God damn it, I want a goddamn answer. What the hell is going on with me? I need to know this diagnosis. I mean, obviously we have all been there at one point of our lives where we're like, what's going on with me? I need to know what's going on with me. I need a diagnosis, doctor. Tell me, tell me. Give me the drugs. Cure me. You know, we have that mentality when we go into a doctor's office. If there's something wrong with us, we need to know. After the appointment, however, after the appointment, I felt like I got kicked in the stomach. Like, I got the worst diagnosis in the world. I mean, I don't know how it would feel. I don't know that feeling of if someone got a cancer diagnosis. Oh my God. I mean, that's horrible. That's like someone kicked you in the stomach and kicked you in the private parts at the same time. I mean, that really sucks. But for me, a healthy individual who got their very first medical diagnosis of seizures, non-epileptic seizures, yeah, it felt like someone kicked me in the vagina and maybe punched me in the stomach. I don't know. It's one of the two. It sucks. (laughs) I was depressed for days. I wanted to cry for days. I was just so beat up. The way that I emotionally handled everything and I thought, I'm going to be a tough girl. I can handle this. No, I couldn't. I was just so beat up. I'm like, the the phrase, this is with you for the rest of your life, had just beat me up. It really did. I, I just, it tore me apart and I, it worries me because... I'm getting a little emotional about this, but I think about my son and that my son has to basically see this for the rest of his life. Right now, being a three-year-old and him seeing mommy get sick, he's really concerned. (laughs) And when I, when I have these seizures and I see him in that little window that I have, I see that look in his eyes 
I see that look of worry and concern and just wondering why mommy is the way mommy is. And I wish that I didn't have this, but I do. And there's, I would do anything to reverse it, but unfortunately there isn't. I, to be honest with you, I had a mini seizure before I actually recorded this episode today. And my arm was flapping around, and Ethan saw me, and Daddy was telling him, Okay, buddy, Mommy's sick right now. Just leave her alone. But you know what he did? He put his little hand over my hand so he so I can stop the tremors. He put his hand over my hand so he can stop the tremors to make Mommy feel better. <sighs> It's amazing. It's just amazing to see him, to be so calm and cool, and the love that he has for me. It's just unbelievable. He's going to see this for the rest of his life. Mommy having seizures. But you know what? This is going to be good. And and I'll tell you why. If I have these seizures, I know that he can take that experience and his know-how to help mommy with the seizures. And he can help someone else with that. So if he was at school or if he was out and about with friends after school and he knew somebody who had seizures... At least he would know what to do. And he would be calm and cool with it and help that individual need. So that's how I look at it. It sucks that he has to see me in that light. But you know what? He can take that experience and apply it to help somebody else in need. So. But moving forward now, I mean, I'm living my life as normal as it can be. And I accepted the fact that the seizures are going to come. They're going to happen. I can't fight it. Uh, to be honest with you, I've I've tried. Um, today, when I had my seizure episode, and I've tried other times to really um, do what <clears throat> Nurse Michelle would tell me to do to control my seizures. No, I can't. I have to let these seizures ride out. And just like the neurologist said too, you have to roll them out. You got to let let the seizures go. Let it do its thing. Do not fight it. Do not resist it because it's not going to work. And it's true. Honest to God, it's true. When you have body tremors like that, when, when, you're, when you have seizures, whether it's epileptic or non-epileptic, there's no way for you to stop and control yourself. I've tried to control my seizures, quote unquote. There's no fucking way possible. Absolutely not. But I've learned to accept the fact that I have to let these seizures roll and let it do its thing. And I don't care who's looking at me or who thinks I'm a freak show or who thinks differently of me or I can't do my job because I have these seizures. You know what? Screw those people. Those people are freaking ignorant. Just because I have a medical condition and I just drop on the floor and flop around like a fish doesn't mean I can get back up and do my freaking job or be a mother or a wife. Because even though I get kicked down because my brain is overloaded and decides to have a freaking seizure, I can always get up and get back up and keep doing what I'm doing each day, just like me and my podcast show. <sighs> So I am, from now on, going to be my self-advocate and bring awareness to psychogenic psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. I want to bring awareness to non-epileptic seizures because what I read from Facebook postings, people think, I well not people on there in the group, but I mean their family members and some of the professionals in the medical field think that this is all in everybody's head because of the anxiety, of the depression, of 
the trauma. And it's so sad. And unfortunately for me, my neurologist who talked to me about this, she, she says, you're having a seizure. Don't call it anything else. It is a seizure. It is a real thing. It is not in your head. I don't believe anybody who has non-epileptic seizures really does this for show. And that's what a lot of people think. A lot of these professional doctors who are not educated enough in non-epileptic seizures, uh, people who, uh, even people who are non-medical professionals see someone having these non-epileptic seizures think it's a show. And it's so sad. I can't believe that. I can't believe these people who suffer from non-epileptic seizures, their family... And friends and medical professionals ridicule them on a condition that they cannot control. It is beyond their control. It just saddens me. And that's why I want to bring awareness onto non-epileptic seizures. I feel so passionate now about this because it has affected me in my life. Like you, it, for me, it's, you know, I'm really passionate and I believe in different theories, um, different ideas, different, um, understanding of cultural uh, issues. Um, I really am interested in that. But, I mean, this, medically, um, this is really something that needs to be brought to light, for sure. Uh, After the diagnosis, I ended up having the flu. (laughs) Oh, man. I was like, man, I have this... Now I know what it is. I'm ready to talk about it on the podcast. Let's do this. And then, boom, last week I got the flu. And I was down and out for like three, four days. I had a temperature of 103. Um, I felt like death was knocking on my door. It was pretty bad. It was really, really bad. And then today was the first day that I said, okay, I'm recording this podcast episode. I don't care what the universe, I don't care what Mother Nature has to say. This podcast episode needs to get done. And I'm finally, finally doing it. I got it done. I'm really excited about it, guys. Oh, boy. Finally did it. Carrie's back on track. Carrie's back, man. She's at it. I'm back at it, boys and girls. Whether you like it or not, I'm still going to be recording podcast episodes. I don't care if one person hears me. I don't give a crap. I don't give a crap if a hundred thousand people hear me. I'm still going to record podcast episodes because this is what I love to do. I can be myself behind the microphone and speak my mind and I love it. I love it all. And I want to thank you again for for everybody. New listeners, veteran listeners, for tuning into the show. I really appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions or any feedback or anything about the show, please don't hesitate to send me the email at carryonwithlife. (laughs) I messed up on my own email. (laughs) Let's get back here. All right. Carry on with life at gmail.com is the email address. Carry on with life. Carry is spelled K E R I, as you guys can see on the show. Uh, so email me there. You can send me a, a message on Instagram. You can also message me on Facebook as well with any ideas, feedback of the show, whether it's critical feedback or not. I don't care. It's something better than nothing. That's all I got to say. And for this particular podcast episode, I didn't really want to film myself um, doing the episode. I think I'll do that maybe on future episodes here. But what I'm going to do, uh, for those who are finding me on YouTube, uh, I'm going to take this episode, go ahead and post an um, audio version of it on YouTube as well. So, it, yeah, by the way... If you don't know, I do have a YouTube channel. Carry On With Life and Coffee is the YouTube channel. The name of the show, you can find me on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, smash the like button on the video. 
let me know what you think. So until then, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, call it an evening. You guys have yourself a wonderful day and carry on with life and coffee.